Hello and welcome to Do-It-Yourself Musician. Today I'm going to talk about the uh, auction that I went to uh, and give you guys a little overview of what happened during the auction and what I got in the auction. Um, the auction, I will say it went like this. Prices were all over the map, up and down. I don't think too many people got really screaming deals. You know, they got fairly decent deals below used value by a bit, but you know, I don't, I don't think anybody got a, a huge stream and deal except for one lot in particular. Um, so yeah, just to go through some of the stuff I talked about, um, in the last video, there was a Clark Technic DM 780 reverb. Um, I did, I did get to bid on that. I think I bid like 150 on it, but it went for like 350. I decided to, you know, I had a, I had this huge list of things that I wanted to bid on and I brought it way, way back, um, between when I made the list and the actual, actual auction day for a particular reason. Cause there was one piece that stuck out to me that, that I've been wanting for a long time and decided to go ahead and try to get that, um, but anyways, the DN780, it, it sold for, that's a good price for that, like $350. Um, the Bryston amplifiers, I just went ahead and let them all go. I, I didn't even bid on them. They were, they were going about eh, $220, $250, which is a good price. You can probably get a 3B on eBay for like $300, $350. Um, there were some great River preamps. It was a four-channel mic pre. It was very nice. I didn't show that one. Um, probably the best piece of audio equipment in that studio, by the way, besides the microphones. Um, and the, that Great River preamp, um, sold for like 1200, I think. And it's probably 1500 to 1800 used. And it was one of the white face Great River. So it was like the original version, which would have been cool to have that. But I got a lot of preamps right here. <laughs> uh, also just real quick, the... Those Sennheiser 441s, I mean, I think they went, I want to say like 300, 350, maybe 400 for those. Um, the tape machines, both of the 24 channel, uh, two inch track, two, two inch 24 tracks, uh, went for about eh, around a thousand dollars, like 1100, $1,200, something like that, which is good for those. In this day and age, it's good. That's a good price for those. You could easily pay, pay four thousand for something like that. Those things do need some work, but not much. The heads were good, and the transport seemed good. So you know somebody got pretty, pretty fair deal on that. Now those big lots uh, up in the attic that I showed you with all that junk up there. Um, the I want to talk about the one lot that uh, that had the. Uh, the Dolby 361 units that had the the TAC, the 16 channel TAC console and those uh, emulator threes. Um, I, I I really thought that was going to go for a lot of money. Uh, this is an example of how this this auction went. Um, when it got to that, it it stalled out at seventy five dollars, and the clock was like down to a second. I went ahead and hit it. I was not going to let that go for 75 bucks. Um, and so I had it at a hundred. Okay. And then, uh, as the clock's ticking down, the guy is reminding everybody that you have to part of the auction rules where you have to take everything out of the building. So everything in that huge lot and all the cabling crap on the ground and all that, you had to take it all out. And, it would take me a week to do that. I don't, I don't have a week to do that. And I, I think this is what suppressed the bidding on that lot by quite a bit. So anyways, as the clock's ticking down, another guy hits it again at for 125. And I, don't, I still don't know how I feel about it. Maybe I should have went for it again and just tried to figure out <laughs> what to do with all that junk. I don't know. But I didn't bid on it again. You know, so I lost all, all that gear. I lost it. Well, I lost it, you know. I didn't get it. You know, it went for $125. And that guy, whoever bought that, there are enough. Even if those uh, emulators are complete trash, 
there's still enough equipment in there to get his money back tenfold on that, you know, and that would have been, it would been pretty cool to have that stuff for this channel, for repairs and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, this is the way it goes. Uh, I couldn't clean that stuff out of there. There's no way it was going to happen. So, yeah, when some you lose some. And the other one I wanted to talk about is the 480L uh, that I showed you also. And that thing, um, <laughs> remember that nobody really supposedly had looked at that thing because they couldn't get into the basement. And they also said that in order to pick it up, you'd have to make an appointment with, with a certain person to get that stuff. That lot, I think, went for like $550. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, who knows? That that 480L, it, it likely may not work. I don't know. But I, I really just kind of feel like that it does work. I think everything in that building pretty much was in halfway decent shape and would work. You know, I, I just think that... You know, they just weren't using it. I don't, I don't know why you would stick that unit down there and not have a use for it. I mean, I, I mean, they were a they were a post facility, very commercial, very driven by contemporary um, t television and and movies and stuff. So yeah, I mean, some facility like that that could easily go by the wayside for plugins, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's it. So. I will say real quick, if you want to look up that facility, uh, it's called Larson Post, or was called was called Lar Larson Post. And go ahead and Google Larson Post, orange is the new black, and, and read about what happened to them. It's very interesting. They were, they were hacked by hackers. So anyways, I did get a couple of things, and like I said, Analog became the name of the game in my mind at this auction. So here's what I got. All right, so here's the first lot that I won. And as you can see, it's a Tascam 122 Mark III cassette player. Um, I've been wanting a cassette player for quite a while now. I've been looking around, especially to try to get one of these guys. Um, and quite frankly, these things are getting expensive. <laughs> you think you could get this for less than a hundred dollars, but you know, good luck. Good luck trying to find one for less than like four hundred uh, from the prices I've seen lately. Um, I mean, cassettes are they're kind of coming back. Um, I don't know if, if any of you guys keep up with that stuff, but you know, I've actually got a stack here. This is all stuff that's been made uh, in the last uh, year. You know. This is a good record, by the way. Go Team Semicircle. I mean, everybody that's making vinyls, you know, also making a cassette copy of everything. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't think cassettes are actually gonna are gonna make a big comeback as vinyl, but they are they are being put out. Like uh, this is a little band from uh, Fort Worth, um, and I think the only the only hard copy that they did of this is a cassette, actually. Um, and this, of course, is Van Sire. This cassette came from the Spirit Goth Cassette Club. And that's one reason that I actually wanted to get a good cassette player, not only to to sort of record to it if somebody wanted it, but also to play cassettes from this cassette club. And Spirit Goth Records, there's their, their logo there, Spirit Goth Records, spiritgoth.com. Um, they have a cassette club and for like, I don't know, I think it's $7 a month. They send a, uh, a new cassette of some real underground, uh, bands out for you to listen to. It's a real cool thing to join if you're into, uh, shoegaze, um, dream pop, bedroom pop, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, check it out. Spiritgoth.com. I don't want this to be a Spirit Goth commercial, but, <laughs> Uh, it's just really cool. So this unit was in, in the, um, transfer room at Larson and they were using this piece of gear. Um, this knob, I just noticed this knob's a little off. It just needs to be screwed back on, but, um, 
they were actually using this piece of gear, so I was confident this thing works, and it does work. I've already checked it out a little bit, um, and I was able to turn it on there because, like I said, they were using it, and uh, uh, and it was plugged in and everything. But you know, I can go ahead and and throw a cassette in there. Let's throw the Van Sire in. I think it's got to go this way. No, it's got to go this way, right? I don't know. And let's see. Let's go to uh, fast forward it, actually. I don't know if you can see the counters moving. Stop. Play. And, of course, you can see the VU is working. So... It does work. I've already plugged it into an audio source. I'm not actually going to play any audio right now, you know, because of the copyright BS and everything. But it, it, it does work fine, and um, all, the, all the functions work and everything. Uh, the only thing I've spotted so far is the headphone jack. I think it's got a broken solder joint, and it needs to be cleaned up. They stuck a, a label on it at the auction, and now that stuff is stuck on there. But I'll have to... I'll have to get that off there, but there'll be a, I'll do a follow-up video on it. Um, you know, kind of getting it ready, uh, for service here. And, uh, let me go ahead and spin it around just to take a look at the back of it here. And yeah, it's got some junk on it and it's dusty as crap, but you know, what do you expect from being in service for 30 years? But I can't wait to get it plugged in and running. It's going to be fun to have a good old cassette player again. All right. And let me show you the next lot that I got. And here is auction score number two. It's an Otari MX55TM. This is a two track machine uh, with time code, uh, which actually means it's three three tracks. There's a center time code track. It does have a Dolby HX Pro system, which is not an encoding system. It's just a, uh, I believe it, it, it tailors the high end frequencies. Uh, I don't know, makes them record better or something. <laughs> I don't know. We'll look into that later. But uh, as you can see, maybe not in the best shape. Um, things I, I noticed immediately upon looking at it, uh, just beside, you know, the paint and cosmetic issues, there is a broken off, uh, I don't know, there's like a little feet. There's one broken off here on the, the left back side of it. Um, there is, uh, the VU meters are a little faded. I don't know if it was in direct sunlight for a while or something. There's some scuffing up here on top. Um, you know, I don't know. It's just general. And of course it's dirty, uh, and everything. I actually at this point I don't know if this runs. I've, I've not tried it. I do have it plugged in right now. I've not hit the on switch. We're gonna do that together. <laughs> I did inspect the heads at the auction. Um, they look good. Um, there were several machines there, Otari machines. There was a MTR ninety two. There was a MX um, eighty. 2 inch 24 track and there was an MTR 12 4 track machine there and I th you know I would love to have a 2 inch 24 track I'm not going to lie but <laughs> the, you know those things are they weigh like 300 pounds or something I'm not bringing another heavy thing in here my console was, was tough enough and 2 track will be fun because you can mix down to it and uh, that's going to be cool to have that ability um Everything else in here looks fairly good. It needs to be cleaned and whatnot. The pinch roller looks okay. Um, these guide rollers, they, they look okay too. The rubber seems pretty pretty good on them. I'm going to assume that since this was in Larson that it was being used. Maybe it just it's been a while since they used it. So, um, Other than that, I, I've noticed that this top unit it appears to be a bit tweaked. Like you can see there's a gap right here and it's kind of off center. Um, I don't think it's been dropped though. Um, this thing, it the catalog says it weighs 66 pounds, I think, but I, I actually think this is much heavier than that. 
And if this had been dropped, you would definitely see, see it, it would break itself. So <clears throat> I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just these are mis, I mean, it's kind of loose actually. Maybe it's just misaligned or something. But I think when I go through this, I'm going to pull all that apart and just reset all of it. I do have the stand for it too, by the way. Um, and I'll pull the stand over here in a minute and show you that. That, that one actually has some damage on it. Here's the stand that it came with. It does have casters for it, which I do have. Unfortunately, the casters are the biggest issue with this whole tape machine and everything. Let me pull you down closer and I'll show you what happened. Okay. If you look here, whoop. If you look here, you can see that there's a broken weld here. And what goes in there is the caster, and, and that's like the little receiver for the caster. So these welds, these welds somehow got broken out, so there's no way to attach the, the caster to it. If you look at the bottom one, you can see that that little caster a little sort of socket thing is supposed to be welded on there but those are broken off so that's that's actually a problem I, I've been looking at this trying to figure out how to get that fixed and I guess I could get it re-welded but that like I said that's even more money it's really tough to try to figure out how to attach a caster at this angle so, if you got any ideas, let me know. Let's try turning it on, see what happens. So, like I said, I've not turned this on, so let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay. I've got slides, and I just heard a relay go, and it said 15 ips, inches per second. Um... What? Oh, yeah, you know, that's, um, hang on. I have to pull this. Right. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now the cap stand's moving, so. Yeah, that's running, man. It's pretty quiet, too. There's rewind. Fast forward. Oh, I might have to. Okay, is that. You might have to do that to get it to record, actually. Yeah, because now I've got a record light. I do notice this, uh, this LED is a bit banged up right here. <clears throat> oh, I'm hitting the wrong thing. That, that's recorded right there. Let's save. I guess it does go into record like that. I don't know. I don't entirely know how to operate this, but I'm just glad that it's running. <laughs> um, it does have, it has a, an oscillator which is working oh yeah internal speaker there's 10 kilohertz there's a hundred Hertz it is it's actually I can hear it it's going it's hard to hear though so yeah that's pretty encouraging it's going to need some work to get it going, but basically I think it's a functioning tape machine. I paid a little bit more for it than I wanted to, but I really got the analog fever <laughs> during the auction. Um, what else can I say about it? Uh, oh yeah, you know, the thing is, I'm finding with this as well as my console, 
is that when you buy a piece of gear like this, you're not only buying this piece of gear, but you're buying everything that goes with it. And so in order practically to run this machine, to, to actually use it in a, in a way that it's meant to be used, I'll have to buy NAB reel adapters. It, did, it didn't come with any on it. Those are probably $100. I'm going to have to buy an alignment tape, which is probably $140, $150. I'll have to buy blank tape and a take-up reel, which is another hundred and something dollars. You know, so you're... You're looking at probably $400 to even just start to run one of these things. Sure, you can cut corners and buy smaller reels and blah, 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 but that, I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be, you know, refurbishing this thing as best as I can, and I'm going to use it. So there will be some investment in it, like the console with the cabling and everything was a lot of money. <laughs> but cool. All right. Like I said, in follow-up videos, I mean, I'll, I'll take videos when I'm going through this thing, uh, getting it ready to to work. Uh, I mean, everything seems to work, so <clears throat> not really, I don't know, not really good. And I, I also, I should say before I, I started, I did look in the head here, and uh I'll pull you over there, and it does it does have the cards in it, so and everything. I looked at that and the uh, the record and playback heads at the uh, auction preview, so I knew they were good. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll do future videos as I'm cleaning this up, and hopefully we'll be recording tape pretty soon. <laughs>